Flick fans, welcome back to my channel. Today we are watching The Watcher. No, I'm reviewing The Watcher, but uh, this is a Netflix series that dropped on Netflix. Okay. So a married couple moving into their dream home is being threatened by terrifying letters from a stalker. This comes to us from Ian Brennan, Ryan Murphy, really good crew here. So many people that I'm consistently impressed by. We just got Dahmer from the likes of Ryan Murphy, which was a very different type of series. And Honestly, uh, that made me look forward to this, and it's also rated TV mature. A little bit of sex and nudity, violence and gore, mild alcohol and drugs, and moderately frightening scenes. I was hooked by this premise. I was honestly hooked by the first episode, right? It gets off to a strong start. You had this family, and they're moving here for reasons and circumstances, at first at least, unknown, but once you start to learn why they are there is when you begin to get introduced to the neighbors and the cast of neighbors, some interesting character actors, individuals you will recognize or not recognize, the quirkiness of the concept itself starts to come out because each neighbor has their own very distinct personality. And then you have our main family who is operating a bit differently. There's a little bit of tension in the house. The relationships are good at first. But it's one of those cases to where if you're in the house long enough, things begin to change not only with their family dynamic, but their individual personalities and mentalities. And before I get into the story itself and whether or not it capitalizes on this hot start, uh, Naomi Watts, Bobby Cannavale, Henry Hunter Hall plays Dakota, Isabel Gravitt, uh, Jennifer Coolidge is in here, Terry Kinney, a really a stacked cast. And each performance is rock solid. It feels like certain characters are living in an entirely different world. Uh, but that's because there is something going on here to which we're, you know, trying to figure out along with the family. These messages that are being received, this family is being watched, comes along with some very odd things that are happening around them. And it does somewhat get overly odd and overly ridiculous at a point, and we'll talk about that. But at the beginning, it felt grounded, a bit realistic. It's trying to keep you on your toes, and you're thinking to yourself, okay, we're, we're going to start getting answers. We better start getting some answers here. And, and, you know, we have the individual suspects. Someone comes in, a private detective, and tries to take on the case. And again, I was so on board with this series and kind of where we were headed, other than a couple of writing decisions. And it felt like every episode had something happened where I'm like, okay, that's either a bit out of place or I'm not loving the dialogue here. I'm also not loving the fact that the family's just not really looking hard enough, right? They believe that someone is in this house and there are instances where they find someone in the house, but maybe it doesn't have anything to do with these letters. And so, you know, they go and look in one or two rooms. They set up a security system on the outside, but I'm like, guys, just go, go around, go look on the, in go downstairs, go to the basement, look a little harder. You're not looking hard enough. So character decisions started to get in the way. And then you get to the finale, the final few episodes that start to amp up on the ridiculousness. Suspects begin to come up to where I'm like, okay, how, how is that person a suspect? Something happens while a character is sleeping. And again, I'm thinking, okay, this is someone who clearly has had trouble sleeping throughout this entire thing, getting him or herself together, and then that happens while you're asleep, and I'm just like, that, that's, you guys, suspension of disbelief. It's a little overly ridiculous. But the biggest problem with this series, and something that I'm so upset by, because I was loving the journey at points, uh, when I was, you know, able to get over some of my frustrations, I'm like, this is cool, man. This is really cool. And then you get to the ending. And I just, I didn't like the ending. If you want a sense of finality from this ending, I don't think you're going to get it. You may get something to where you can put the puzzle pieces together and think that you put it, no? Okay, you may. But I, I don't know if I did. I don't know if I got the conclusion that was satisfying enough for me to sit down and say, yeah, I would definitely uh, go back in time and tell myself to watch that. Because even though the journey was fun and quirky at times, when you don't get a conclusion that really does anything for that journey, is it worth watching in the first place? And that's the question I'm asking myself. Instead of enjoying the good things that I got, I'm saying, I just don't know if what they did, and I'm trying to tiptoe around spoilers just in case you haven't seen the series, but this is me telling you all, be careful if you get hooked or sucked in. You may not get the ending that you want. Now, if you're okay with 
the type of ending that we get here, I think you're going to be super positive on the show as a whole because there is a lot to like. There are a lot of elements with some of the characters, with the main family, some of the, the, the things that happen that are, again, quirky, a little goofy, a little ridiculous, and the filmmaking, right, a little up and down in moments. Overall, I think it's good. So some really good things in here to make me say, yeah, that was entertaining. But it takes it down numerous notches because it just did not end in the way that I hoped it would. And that's my experience with The Watcher. Before I give you guys my score, let me know down below, how did you feel about this series? What was your viewing experience? And if you've seen the ending, no spoilers, how did you feel about it? And if you like this review, drop that thumbs up. My Halloween Ends review is on this channel right now, Black Adam coming on Tuesday. So the journey itself is quirky, fun, and filled with numerous tense moments featuring the central family. That being said, the series ends up in an awkward place where there's no real sense of finality or payoff. Right now, I'm going to go a 60% with my score because there is a lot of entertainment in here. Uh, but I do need to sit on it just a bit longer just to kind of ponder where I'm at with this series as a whole. And maybe, you know, if you guys have thoughts, be sure to put a spoiler tag and uh, we can come up with, you know, what actually happened at the end. Thanks guys for watching. Appreciate it. See you soon.